Hello everybody, welcome to Chuck and Jordan's video presentation. Yes, me lord. What? what we have here is a rough oh, representation of what the class system was like back in the medieval times. These are what we call peasants. Their main job is to work for the king and to do all the mundane and hardworking tasks that the king wants. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to tell these four peasants to make a barracks where we can make knights and foot soldiers from. The people that protect the peasants are called knights. Their main duties are to protect the peasants and to listen to any orders that the king gives to them. They have a code called chivalry and they must respond to all orders made by the king. Knights are known for being extremely honorable and loyal in combat. The king is the person that rules over all of the land. Kings, however, are known to be very corrupt and sometimes do not respect the wishes of the peasants or his knights. Hmm. I wonder how it felt like to live back in medieval times. So, what are you playing? I'm playing Skittles. It's kind of like modern day bowling. Oh, so what exactly do you do in Skittles? Well, you try to get all the nine pins down. They're situated in a diamond shape. And if you get them all down, it's called a flopper. It's scored just like modern day bowling. That's cool. What are you guys talking about? Oh, we're talking about the Elizabethan bull baiting. What's bull baiting? Well, bull baiting was immensely popular sport back in the Elizabethan era. Even Queen Elizabeth was pleased to spend an afternoon watching these bloodthirsty forms of entertainment. Bull baiting had to be introduced in England during the medieval period of the 1200s, and nearly every town had a bull or bear baiting ring. So it's kind of like, you know, in, uh, in Spain where you have those bull fights. It's kind of like that. Cool. And they're seen as a very great sporting and gambling event and are patronized by all classes of the Elizabethans, including the queen herself, courtiers, and foreign ambassadors. Vast amounts of money were waged on the outcome of these contests, and as you can imagine, a lot of people have died too. What other kind of things do you bet on? They also bet on cockfighting. Now ladies, that's not what you think. <laughs> cockfighting was another popular Elizabethan blood sport. Roosters were filled with sharp blades on each foot and put into a cockpit to fight to the death. Now, these roosters were very expensive, so it took a wealthy man to own these kinds of birds. But the Elizabethans from both the upper and lower classes came to see and bet on these cockfights. Oh. It's cool stuff. This is jousting. <laughs> What is jousting is a tradition, a tradition that comes out of the Middle Ages where two knights would go, would be on horses and would go straight forward at each other as, as fast as they could using lances to knock each other off their horse. They did jousting to express their skills and abilities and achieve their ranks in their communities. What did they joust with? Those are their lances. The lances had little things on them called vamplets. These vamplets protected their hands. So when, so when one lance hit the other, they wouldn't injure their hands. These jousting ceremonies were very popular, and everybody would dress up for them. The knights and the queens would all attend these jousting ceremonies. That's it. Oh, wow. So I heard that you got in a little bit of trouble on the last bullfighting match. Yeah. I looked at the queen the wrong way. Ooh, that sucks. So, how long are you supposed to stay in this position? Well, depending on my offense, I'm either going to be down here for weeks or months. Oh wow, that, that kind of sucks. And they keep torturing me. Torturing you? How do they torture you, Pope? Oh. Well, they, they keep throwing all this stuff at me. It's driving me insane. Oh wow, that... well... This is very possibly called the Street Sweeper's Daughter. The Street Sweeper's Daughter worked by compressing the victim's body, and the torturer could tighten it or loosen it up depending on the victim's offense. This device doesn't look very painful looking, but it was often employed to publicly humiliate the victim. Those particularly hated individuals would often at the mercy of an angry crowd, 
and they often threw stones and fecal matter at the victim. And you will very often see people like this on the streets probably stay in the same position for months. In medieval times, it was really popular for people to watch theaters and plays. People from the richest and the poorest would watch these plays. Right now I'm watching an excerpt from every man. Plays like this motivated playwright, playwriters like Shakespeare to write their plays. I pray you give all your audience and hear this matter with reverence by figure a moral play, the summoning of every man, called it is, that are that of our lives and ending shows how transitory we be all day. This matter of wonder is precious, but the intent of it is more glorious, gracious, and sweet to bear away the story saith, man, in the beginning, look well, and take heed to the ending. Be you never so gay, ye think sin in the beginning full of sweet, which in the end causeth the soul to weep, when the body layeth in clay, here shall you see how fellowship and jollity in the man in this play. Aren't these plays beautiful? Why was seven afraid of eight? Cause seven, eight, nine, ah. The medieval jesters played a minor role in court life, but certainly brightened up the entertainment. The history of court jesters dated back before the medieval era of the Middle Ages, which they are most closely associated with. Many of the jesters were responsible for bringing a spouse to the face of a monarch who was feeling angry or was feeling unwell. The role of the medieval jester was to amuse his master and to excite him to laughter by sharp contrast. One of the many forms of entertainment that the jester employs consists of juggling, telling jokes, or funny stories. So hard.